Well, we're moving on now to have a conversation uh, on CLOGSAG, that is the Civil and Local Government Service Association of Ghana, and what they've been saying, telling government to stop interfering uh, in their activities by placing unqualified people in their midst. That is what they say. We have Professor Ransford Jampo uh, joining the conversation currently. Prof, a very good morning to you. Hi, good morning. It's been a while. I, I hope you've been well. Have you been in your holy village? Um, I'll be there today. All right, Prof. So we'll just take a look at the presser as delivered, uh, and then we'll come back to the pertinent issues. Let's watch this. The lecture was organized to celebrate respected civil servant Nathan Kwao. Clarkson opted for the topic abuse of political power in the Ghana civil service. Executive Secretary Isaac Bampuado said this has become an issue of concern. Recruiting of party apparatchiks as consultants to perform routine civil service functions and paying them higher on hand salaries, thus ballooning the civil service wage bill as reported in the 2020 Auditor General Report for MMDAs and MMDAs. Einstein evidence reveals that the so-called ghost names that cannot be identified in the civil service payroll have turned out to be personal assistants of ministers. Related to the above, Permanent consultancies for key functions of the services have been outsourced to party apparatchik consultants. This has compromised the quality of services provided by most civil servant service organizations, as they are undertaken without the required institutional guidance, expertise, and experience. Foreign training and development workshops meant to build the capacity of civil servants are also hijacked by politicians and their party apparatchiks to the detriment of the growth of the services. The ones they are not able to hijack are sabotage to the disadvantage of the nation. Political appointments of chief directors and heads of departments to the civil and local government services contravenes the Supreme Court ruling on 14 June 2017. Well, those are the thoughts uh, shared as of yesterday. I'd, I'd like to pick your thoughts on, on these as of um, the, the comments that have been made before we get into what your uh, thinking is moving forward. Uh, what did you make of this entire enterprise? Is this something that actually is happening? Um, first of all, so I want to commend the Clause Act for being bold mm. uh, enough to articulate some of uh, these challenges. And there have been challenges that have plagued the civil service um, for long. And oftentimes, even though people are aware of it, uh, we don't talk about it because um, a lot of people these days are not too um, free. And when they want to speak their mind, they feel they may suffer some, some harm or whatever. And so they don't, they don't really uh, want to speak their mind. Um, people are a bit... Um, scared or intimidated, speaking against some of these things. But um, there are things that um, uh, go on the politicization of the civil service. And so um, preliminary comments, I'll say that they have done well bringing um, this to the fore. It is not with only this administration. It doesn't mean only with this administration. We have politicized our civil service um, from time immemorial, even before the inception of the Fourth Republic or um, since the inception of the Fourth Republic up to now, we have politicized our civil service. And um, um, if I may go on, you see, the one who gave the idea for, or the formulation of the civil service is called uh, Max Weber, a German sociologist who looked, who postulated on the need for us to have an administrative machinery of the state that would serve as a policy formulation and policy implementation in our body. So um, the civil service is supposed to be, uh, first of all, formulating policies. If you have heads of its um, top echelons being there, they may have their ideas. But the civil service that would dispassionately weigh the pros and cons of the ideas and then um, process um, these ideas into well thought through um, policy uh, uh, policies. 
And then when they are formulated, they are the same people who help uh, play a crucial role in implementing um, their policies. Now, to be able to ensure that policies are properly formulated and then they bring about effect, uh, effective and efficient administration of the state, these civil service, uh, the civil service is supposed to start by people who are experts and competent. Uh, because the idea is that government will come, government will go, but policies and the state or nation building will go on, or must go on. And so you need a certain caliber of people who are competent and full world expertise. Today, in this regard, Max Weber advocated that uh, in determining who must staff the civil service, which he, he brought the principle we call meritocracy, as in the ones who are uh, appointed to staff uh, the civil service must be appointed based solely on merit. And so if you need a master's degree to be able to occupy a certain position, that is all you need. And then beyond meritocracy, right. we are also expected, um, civil servants are also expected to be apolitical in their dealings. As in mm. partisan consideration must not be the factor in determining who must uh, be appointed a member of the civil service. And politicians, according to Mark Weber, are expected uh, to stay off uh, the activities of uh, the civil service. When uh, Weber says that the civil servants must be politically neutral, he does not mean that they must not vote during elections or they must not have uh, political parties of their preference. But political neutrality on the part of the civil service is that um, connotes the idea that, look, they must not be seen openly and publicly to be identifying themselves with any political party. So civil servants are not supposed to say that we belong to party A or party B. They are not supposed to openly be seen to be adorned in party t shirt and other party paraphernalia. They are not supposed to be seen at party um, rallies, and they are not supposed to be seen um, campaigning openly for any political party. Mm -hmm. But during voting, their vote, their, their vote is just a secret, so they can go and exercise their franchise. And so um, these are some of the things that Max Weber um, said about the civil service in order to make um, it a potent administrative machinery of the state. Unfortunately, in our part of the world, recruitment and appointment in the civil service have not been based on meritocracy. And then also we have politicized the civil service. And so one party comes, and because it has promised a lot of jobs um, to its own apparatus, the civil service becomes the avenue where these political parties then tend to appoint uh, act their own party support base. So in the process, you have appointments not based on meritocracy, and you have square pegs often filling round holes. And so they are unable to function um, to deliver on the mandate of the civil service. That's the reason why... If you go there, they have nothing to do. Most of them, they have nothing to do. Some are selling, some are, some are gossiping, some are uh, playing drafts, and some are selling um, um, Sobulo, some are selling Asana, some are selling cloth, and they pull from one to one office to the other, just, just marketing their words. And they have nothing to do because they are square pairs in round holes, because we have packed the civil service with them. Now, anytime another regime comes, like I said, they are supposed to be politically neutral, and then they are supposed to be experts. So anytime another regime comes, a new regime comes, it treats the civil service with, with, with contempt because they feel that uh, when they were there, they, uh, they appointed their own people there, and they were not competent enough. The appointment was not based on meritocracy. So anytime another government comes, they feel they treat the civil service with, with, with suspicion. And so they don't give them work to do. And that's the reason why you have a lot of consultants and special advisors being appointed by new regimes. It is a way of creating or recreating another civil service within the civil service. And so you pretend to go to work and be working, and government will pretend to be paying you. Uh, you pretend to be working, and yet at the end of the day, your productivity is zero because the work that is supposed to be done by you would have been given to some other uh, advisors or consultants. And so you get up in the morning, um, and because you have nothing to do, I know a civil servant who gets up in the morning and uh, a loiter around, leaves their house around uh, Asalipochi, 
around 10, um, 10 a.m. Um, she gets to the office around 11.30 a.m., sits for 30 minutes. She's going to, she goes for lunch, spent about two hours at the lunch. After lunch, she comes to pick her bag. And then, I say, I leave so far away. So then, she picks a trotter and go home. They behave as if they are supposed to be seen to have been at the office. And then, they don't do anything else. And they go home. And so, generally, this is how appointment not based on meritocracy and then politicization of the civil service you know, has landed us as a nation. So that now the civil service, even though the one who formulated it expected it to be a competent administrative manager of state, now it operates as a very toothless and very incompetent and inefficient um, administrative machinery of the state that only provides an avenue where people go there to earn a monthly salary without doing anything um, for the state. Prof, uh, thank you for that, you know, underlying... Uh, what would I say, thoughts on this all-important matter. But you rightly point out that it didn't start today. It's been going on and government in, government out. This situation rears its ugly head. But would you say it is worse now? Is it worse now compared to what it used to be from what you know? Well, um, we have not had Clostag. I don't remember hearing Clostag. Um, coming up, uh, coming out with such a statement um, before uh, mm. since the inception of the Fourth Republic. As far as I'm concerned, um, this is the first time you are hearing uh, Klosak making such public pronouncements. Mm. Uh, uh, and so, to that extent, you would say that uh, then um, it's been worsened. Right. So I agree with you there because while there's been talk about it, never has the body, the umbrella body come out like this. Does that point to how endemic this problem really has become? And, and I'll, well, I'll... well, like I said, it's been there from, if you like, from inception of the public, it's, it's always been there. But to the extent that you have a body now publicly making, uh, having a press conference and talking about it, mm. it tells you that it's been, it's been worsened. Um, uh, and it is not the best, it's not good for our public administration. Uh, the public administration system, you know, of, of the country. And the earlier um, we do something about it, um, the better. The point is that if power changes hands, mm. uh, it will still continue. And so it's, right. it's up to us to be able to... Uh, so you can imagine, it, will, it, will, uh, it is up to us to be able to speak against it and ensure that we restore the civil service to its lost glory. We restore... Um, it's to the ideal type as postulated by the German sociologist uh, Max Weber. Because it doesn't, I mean, it is part of the sources of the drainage on our public uh, purse. People are recruited to places or to um, government ministries, departments, and agencies. Mm. They go to the office, they have no work to do, and yet we keep paying them. And government also, because it, it does not trust in the competence of the civil service, because we have staffed it with our own. They tend to recruit their own consultants and advisors and adv special advisors and advisors to the consultants and all manner of people parade themselves with all manner of designations. And like I heard them say, the salary or the amount of money that we take uh, pays about 100 people. One person takes salary that pays about 100, 100 civil servants. And so at the end of the day, we just dissipate national, uh, national you know, scarce national resources unnecessarily Mm. Um, just um, to pretend uh, that we are maintaining a civil service, which in reality does not uh, worth its salt. So today you've taken me back to the classroom with Max Weber and uh, all his teachings on politics and public administration and everything. But I also find it interesting because uh, not too long ago we were talking about neutrality allowance. And all of a sudden now we are talking about political infiltration into the civil society. Let me also bring in, uh, hold for me, Prof. Let me bring in Isaac Bampo, who is president of Clocksag. He joins the conversation. Mr. Bampo, a very good morning to you. Good morning. How did we get here to the point where Clocksag, as Professor Jampo suggests, for the first time in the Fourth Republic, has to have a press conference like this and talk about the fact that your ranks are being infiltrated by people who are not even qualified all through politicization? 
Yeah, when you say, how did we get here? Um, well, I don't know how to answer this question because um, the politicians over time have been infiltrating our ranks. Mm. And every time there's a new government, we see more personal assistance and covering civil service positions. But this has been heightened by this uh, 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 recent time. And it's at an alarming rate where we have typical institutions being created to power civil service institutions, creating some of our members, letting them be redundant. And this is an issue that has gone on for a long time. I think this is the time we want to talk about it because it's killing the service. You want to talk about it now. Is it because the situation is worse now? Or is it just because... I mean, what, no what, what has triggered this? Situation. Like an example, you go to Best and Death uh, Registry, where I would say somebody who is not a career civil servant has not, any, has not got any experience in uh, best registration, has been imposed over there. You see, and all these things is killing morale, is demotiv demotivating our members. And these are issues that are in public domain. And I think what we are seeing is that it's time we do something about this, or else we'll kill the state. Tell me about how many people are we looking at who are unqualified, yeah, as no you more. say? Yeah, no when you go to the office, you see them walking on the corridors. Of, they are there. They are all guru boys. The, the they are guru the boys. Where you find guru boys there, under the trees. Now they are sitting in our office. So explain and to me, oh, uh, hold on, let's have a conversation, Mr. Bampo. Explain to me, what exactly do they do? You see, I'm a bit confused. You say they are Goro boys, now they are walking around, and now they are sitting in your offices. Yeah, what they exactly are, do they, they do? Are, they, are, they are doing the work that civil servants are supposed to do. You go to uh, Minister of Finance, the internal auditor out there has been brought by the minister. You go to other uh, places, you go to the trade, chief director, even they are bringing their own chief director. And, and could bring them into the uh, 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 service before you, you can uh, um, 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 you can come on secondment. It has to be approved. You cannot just bring someone and say the person is on secondment. It has, must be approved by the council. But you see them walking around. They say they are in there. Nobody has approved their secondment. And before you come on secondment, we, the, the civil service must know what work I come to do. That duty I come to perform. You have the same skill there, but all these things are being flouted. There are rules and regulations regulating all these things, but they are being flouted with impudence. In other words, the, the rules... issue is mm. that service delivery is going down. Service delivery is going down. You create parallel institution. I can't go on and go on. No, no, you know, you, uh, um, uh, uh, we all are aware of what's happening. And we filed two suits, we, currently we filed two suits, one at the Supreme Court, one at the uh, High Court, on all these issues. So obviously there is some illegality taking place. Uh, with, without the secondment, these people shouldn't even be there. So how do they get there? The rule and regulations, when it comes to the civil service, are being flouted with impunity. I get that, but my and question that, is, and how we've exactly... Even, we've, we've even gone to the court for the court to uh, uh, take a decision on this thing. Mm. So it's not an issue that you are manufacturing. M Mr. Bampo, I understand you, but my question is, how do they get in? I, I, are there members of the civil service who are also complicit? If the political elements bring in people who are not qualified, my question is, how are, they, ab well, how are they absorbed uh, into the system? I cannot say that. What I can say is that we are having these people, these guru boys, improving their position. If, 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 if any civil servant is involved in bringing them, all of them must be dealt with. The important thing is that there are people who are not supposed to be there, and they are there. And they are destructing services. Do, do these people get paid at the end of the month from the government? No, no. Of course, if someone is coming there every day, that means they find a way of paying them, but they are not on the civil service payroll. <laughs> Because I will not come, wake up in the morning and come to uh, uh, sit at the place if I don't get money. I won't go. But because every day I sit down and dress up and wear my coat and go and sit, that means I get something there. So these are the issues. Thank you very much.
All right, so that's that's a very important point you made. I had I just had to clarify that because you know recently at the finance ministry, shockingly, we found out that there were some ghost names about three people drawing so much by way of monthly salaries and all of that. People who were not even at the ministry. So I just wanted to clarify. What then would you say is the way forward as far as this discussion is concerned? Uh, I, it, it is clear it is not just restricted to this administration, though it may be something that has come to the fore for you to now come out. How do we sanitize the system to ensure that come this party or that party, the political you know, elements don't interfere? Will the court case solve that for you? It appears uh, we've lost Mr. Bumpo. We'll try and, we'll try and get him back for those uh, final thoughts. Professor Jampo, um, yeah. so, so you see the picture as, as painted by Mr. Bampo. It is, it is not one we would want, but it's happening. What is the way forward? <laughs> well, like I said, this has been with us from time immemorial. And um, unfortunately, politicians have not done much um, in addressing it because they themselves, as I indicated earlier, have oftentimes gone on to... Um, to um, Make, make promises about um, giving people jobs and also in tandem with our very disingenuous practice of patron client relations. Anytime politicians get the opportunity to ascend up to the political throne, they always want to um, find places for some of their parachutes um, to be working as a way of paying them back for the support they offered them um, mm -hmm. um, during the electionary campaign process. And so we need um, a shift from this practice. You, we need a leader, somebody who would appreciate all these issues and, and tell us that, look, I truly really would create jobs, but it will not be um, within the public sector. It will not be within the realms of the ministries, uh, department, and agencies, because that place is choked. We are and, and, and that's an interesting okay. point you make. Uh, pardon the interjection. We must create jobs for the boys and girls, as the political parties usually say. And, and they will always look for these loopholes, right? Yeah, no, so I'm saying we must create job openings, but certainly not within um, the realms of the ministry, the parliament and agencies, because they are took. Oftentimes we are told that about 98% uh, of the people who um, seek jobs at the uh, former uh, public sector do not get. Mm. And there's only about 2% who get out of school and then find openings there, you know, legit, um, in a regular recruitment process. The rest who find themselves there are uh, um, uh, uh, surreptitiously smuggled there by their political payments and um, the, the political elite. So the point is that we will need somebody who appreciates these challenges and say that we cannot continue to do it over and over and over again. I mean, if people are not working, they are not supposed to be paid. It's as simple as that. And we cannot be deceiving ourselves that we are a civil service when we know that uh, in reality... We, we do not have. And we cannot go on with the practice of oftentimes creating another civil service that is more expensive to run parallel with the regular civil service. That's what is happening now. If power changes hands now, the new regime that will come would also say that we don't trust those uh, who are there because they were appointed by our predecessors. And so it, it, it is because per their principles, they are what we call security of tenure, it becomes difficult for you to fire them. They will be there, but they will not be giving work to do. Instead, a um, new regime would create another civil service that will run power with them. So there is this distrust and, and all that. So it is important we have leadership. See, one of the solutions, um, solutions that will help us fight the quagmires of poverty and underdevelopment and right. help us govern ourselves well is for, it's, it's a certain leadership that also understands the problems that confront us as a nation. It appears that leaders do not also have a firm grasp of all the problems that confront us as a people. And so some of these things continue to recur mm. and they are a needless drain on the resources of the nation. Well, hopefully we are able to get, you know, leadership to crack the whip if it is even possible on that note. But Prof, we're, we're, we're grateful that you took the time to engage us this morning. Uh, Professor Ransford Jampo, uh, political scientist at the University of Ghana. Grateful for your time.